On the 1st of August 2011, the Met Office will be celebrating 150 years of forecasting for the nation. To help celebrate, we'll take a look at the history of the Met Office and some of the key events along the way. 150 years ago, on the 1st of August 1861, the first daily weather forecast was published in the Times. This was published by Vice Admiral Robert Fitzroy, who achieved lasting fame as captain of the HMS Beagle during Charles Darwin's famous voyage. A pioneering meteorologist, he set up the Met Office as part of the Board of Trade in 1854. Convinced he could forecast the future weather, he set about publishing his daily weather forecast in the national press in 1861. He was applauded for his efforts abroad, but in the UK it was a different story. Whenever he got a forecast wrong, he was ridiculed and was the butt of jokes. On the 30th of April 1865, Fitzroy died. A year later, his forecast ceased, but following pressure from politicians, the shipping industry and the press, they resumed in 1867. By 1879, his forecast for the public had resumed as well. We all rely on the TV and weather forecasts we see and hear on a daily basis. The first radio bulletin was broadcast on the 14th of November 1922. This involved an announcer reading out a script that had been prepared by a Met Office forecaster. TV weather forecasts reached us in 1949, but it wasn't until 1954 that we saw the first Met Office weather presenter, George Cowling, on our screens. Unlike modern weather forecasts we see today that have high-tech graphics and chroma key technology like I'm in front of today, George Cowling relied on a weather map, a pencil and a rubber to show what the weather would do tomorrow. Today, the partnership between the Met Office and broadcasters is still going strong. Daily forecasts began on the 26th of March 1923 and a forecast has been seen or heard on television and radio almost every day since. The exception was during World War II when radio forecasts were suspended in case they helped the enemy. Another iconic forecast you will have heard of is a shipping forecast. This began in October 1925 and has become a British institution since. The Met Office produced the shipping forecast on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency and covers the 31 shipping areas from South East Iceland in the north to Fitzroy in the south. The weather affects us day to day, but one of our weather forecasts changed history. General Dwight D. Eisenhower may have thanked the gods of war for the timing of the D-Day landings, but it was an accurate weather forecast that was responsible for the successful invasion of the Normandy beaches on the 6th of June 1944. Conditions were unsuitable on the 4th of June, and one German commander is reported to have returned home for his wife's birthday, convinced that no invasion fleet could launch. But at a vital meeting on the 5th of June, Eisenhower's chief meteorologist, Group Captain Sir James M. Stagg, forecast a brief improvement in the weather for the 6th of June. The rest is history. Today, our mobile MET unit supports UK and Allied forces during operations, ensuring the safety of military staff. Throughout the history of the Met Office, there have been some key weather events that have shaped our history. One of the most memorable was the Great Storm of 1987. On the 16th of October, hurricane-force winds battered parts of southern England, blowing down trees, cutting off power and sadly killing 18 people. The Great Storm was remarkable for its ferocity, with gusts exceeding 100 miles an hour in places and was the worst storm to hit the UK for over 200 years. As a result, the National Severe Weather Warning Service was established to provide warnings for the general public to protect life and property from the effects of severe weather, and they are still helping keep the nation safe today. In July 2007, the UK experienced widespread flooding that threatened both life and property. The Met Office produced some of the most detailed heavy rainfall warnings ever. In response to the widespread flooding, the Met Office set up the Flood Forecasting Centre in partnership with the Environment Agency. Combining the expertise of both organisations, the role of the Flood Forecasting Centre is to deliver ever more focused flood warnings. The benefits of this partnership were clearly seen during the terrible floods in Cumbria in 2009, where advanced warning provided vital time for agencies to prepare. The Met Office is continuing to forecast for the nation, whether through our website, on TV and radio, or through newer ways, such as our website widget and our popular iPhone app. The weather has shaped this country over the last 150 years, and throughout that time, the Met Office has been forecasting when it matters. To find out more about the work of the Met Office, visit www.metoffice.gov.uk.